Hi, I'm Hannah Muller, and this is my presentation on eating disorders in sports. So eating disorders are mental illnesses that can affect someone physically, psychologically, and socially. People with eating disorders have an obsession with weight and or their food. Um, they will participate in things such as restriction, avoidance, binging, and purging, and there are multiple kinds of purging. Um, and they often occur with other mental illnesses such as depression, anxiety, OCD, body dysmorphia, and many others. And then normally it coexists with substance abuse. So eating disorders affect um, sufferers mentally and physically. So some of the mental effects can be depression, anxiety, lack of concentration, social isolation, guilt, trouble sleeping, and seizures. And then physical effects can be menstrual abnormalities in females, hormonal imbalances, heart problems, dizziness and fainting, fatigue, muscle weakness, heartburn and reflux, constipation, bloating. And then there are stress fractures because the lack of nutrients will cause your bones to be weaker. And one form of purging is excessive exercise. So um, excessively exercising on weaker bones can lead to fr uh, stress fractures. And then there is dental decay because of the, because of um, vomiting and that can lead to um, like the stomach acid on the teeth, it'll cause dental decay. And then there are many types of eating disorders. Um, it is not limited to the list here, but these are some of the more common ones. So there is anorexia nervosa, which is starvation, bulimia nervosa, which is binging and purging. And there's binge eating, which is eating excessive amounts in a short period of time. There is avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, which is avoiding certain foods. There is pica, which is consuming inedible substances. And other specified um, feeding and eating disorders is when it doesn't fit into one of these other categories. So anorexia nervosa is starvation. It has the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. And there are two subtypes. There is restricting anorexia and there is binge purge anorexia, which normally binge and purge it would be bulimia. But if they meet the weight requirements for anorexia nervosa, then it is an anorexia nervosa subtype. And to be considered anorexic and to be diagnosed with anorexic, the person has to be underweight. Then there is bulimia nervosa which someone will binge and purge. So they will binge to the point um, or like they'll eat so much or they're nauseous or they're uncomfortable. And then they will purge by either vomiting, um, laxative abuse or excessive exercise. And it's often overlooked because normally uh, people with bulimia aren't underweight. Normally they're um, an average weight or overweight. However, they can be underweight, overweight, or average. And then there's binge eating disorder, which is the most common eating disorder. And it's when someone has a loss of control when eating and they eat large quantities in a short period of time. Um, and like in bulimia, they will eat until the point of discomfort or um, nausea. Then there is avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. So someone will avoid foods because of sensory characteristics such as color, smell, and texture. And they also have a fear of what can result from eating the food, like choking and food poisoning, bloating, diarrhea, etc. And they often lack nutrients because they're scared of so many different types of foods and eating these foods that they, will, they won't have the amount of nutrients that they need. There is pica or pica, which is consuming um, items that aren't food and they have no nutritional value. So consuming things like paper, soap, chalk, hair, ice, clay, or paint chips um, for a few examples. And they can often get very sick because um, some of the substances like paint chips are toxic. And then they can also end up with blockages in their throat because of the things that they're eating. 
And then other specified feeding and eating disorders is when the frequency of their um, disordered habits or their weight might differ from the requirements to be categorized as one of the other eating disorders, but they still have all the bad like disordered habits and stuff. So one of these would be atypical anorexia is when someone still has extreme weight loss, they're still malnourished and they still starve themselves. However, they don't meet the weight requirements to be considered anorexic. And this can be really damaging to whoever is diagnosed with atypical anorexia because they might feel unvalidated and this might push them to continue to starve themselves so they can feel valid, um, so they can be diagnosed with anorexia rather than atypical anorexia. So sports play a big role in the influence of eating disorders. And um, according to different um, surveys and researches uh, about um, different sports, um, is this is where I got all my um, information is a various number of surveys and uh, sources. And it was found that in running, 35% of female runners and 10% of male runners had an increased risk of anorexia. In wrestling, bulimia was found to be really common because of weight classes and having to cut weight. And figure skating um, was found that 85% had a um, had disordered habits or had an eating disorder. In swimming, there's the eating disorders because they need to be lean for better dynamics. Um, gymnastics was found to have about 16.3% of, of gymnasts had disordered behaviors. In dance, 16.4% of dancers had um, eating disorder. And generally, it's in ballet dancers. Rowing, similar to wrestling, has weight classes. So that influenced eating disorders. And then horse racing, um, it was found that 42% of equestrians had an ED or body image distortion. And the list is not limited to these sports. These are just some of the most common sports, but there are still many others that have eating disorders. Um, so the cause of this, um, while there is many causes for eating disorders, such as environmental factors and genetics, specifically focusing on the cause because of sports, there are weight classes in sports such as wrestling and rowing, and that can often drive athletes to find unhealthy ways to cut weight. Um, appearance standards. So in dance, gymnastics, and figure skating, the expectation for the for appearance is generally having to be extremely thin to fit the body ideals. And then performance. So in sports like swimming, it's important to be lean because that helps with the dynamics and increasing performance levels. So this can be helped by counseling or therapy. Um, the athlete can quit their sport, which might be hard for a lot of people to do, but they um, have to realize that they need to put their health before their sport. And sometimes that's a struggle for athletes. Um, there will be medical intervention if someone's eating disorder gets bad and, you know, they're in danger um, of like permanently damaging their health. There are helplines and um, these people can also speak to nutritionists that can help them um, get back into a healthy diet and find um, healthy ways of losing weight or um, changing their mindset on just like the, what they need to do to perform the best in their sport. So thank you for watching and here's the National Eating Disorder Association helpline.